Right, welcome back. The third race. Let's take a look at what we're doing in this maiden class field. Run over 1,900 meters, and it does appear as if Gideon's daughter is going to be quite hard to beat here. Some say was very unlucky not to have won last time out and is going over this distance for the first time. And I guess that, at the end of the day, Mr. Burrows, is the question mark. Um, if you're happy that this horse will stay. Uh, the manner in which he finished off and lengthened her stride late on in that race last time out suggests she will stay. Now, obviously, pedigree, I don't know the damn good hoop, but Skit Skizzle, uh, he was more of a miler, sprint miler. But um, as long as she settles, because early on in her race last time out, she was fighting fiercely against the bit, then she dropped the bit, then she picked it up again, then she dropped it. So I think Richard Free knows her better this time around and uh, he'll get her to settle into a rhythm and surely she's going to finish her race off strongly of seeing out the trip. Um, I've opted to banker the filly. I've taken three bankers, three fields in the pick six. It's only a 900 rand perm and I think it's worth a go. Okay, so that's the story from Darren's side. Maybe it is worth a go. This also will stay or what do you think? Well, the dam won over 2400, Clyde. And the way she finished last time, I'd suggest she is looking for further. I just hope she settles in running and I expect her to reverse the form. Okay. Take a lot of beating. Take a lot of beating. So you're quite confident then, all right? Yeah. So you're also on Gideon's Daughter. So that's whilst we're doing the show, this morning it's even money. There's also Gideon's Daughter. And uh, second choice is number one, Sky Velocity at seven to two. So it is the start now of pick sixes as well. Are you taking a pick six today? Um, I haven't, Clyde. I haven't think taken. Darren's opted to bank her. Yeah. Um, I'll be very disappointed if she gets beat. I think she's crying out for the extra. Richard, right. Richard will want to make amends. Okay. Here we go. We have it, Mr. Marie. Thank you very much. We've got your pick six up and running. We're going to put that up for you guys to take down. I know somebody said we, we're taking two... We're taking... Um, uh, very, what, is, what's, what, are those, what were his words? Please, you're flying through the slide. So just leave the slide up, Ricky, for the next 10, 15 seconds, please. So the guys can write all this down. Thank you. We have got a code for you to scan. That's the latest technology. Please start using that. Thank you. On to race number four now. Let's chat about this. This is a classified stakes. It's over 1,900 meters, and uh, as far as the show is concerned, up until when we were recording this morning, all seem to be participating. Ten horses in the race that will run. From a market perspective, San Clues the favorite. Number six on the card is priced up at seven to two, and number one, Downing Seven, is priced up at four to one. There's one other that's perhaps worth considering. Number eight, the Charioteer, is the third favorite at the moment, is five to one. Mr. So Marie, I'll start with you. Just to chat about the first leg of the jackpot here, um, and what do you like? Yeah, I think the race stops with those three that you've mentioned, Clyde. Firstly, number one, Downing Seven. The stables come extremely well. Saw that form line being franked. Storm Commander won from there. St. Clues an improving um, Silvano Philly. She's fairly well weighted over here. She's second best in, and we haven't seen the best of her. So, one for the shortlist. And then... The charioteer, last time he ran above his rating in the Betway Race Horse Owners Association. Um, so he's gone into all of my perms. So I think um, one, six and eight will suffice. Okay. So the charioteer that also Empire Blue came from there and won as well. So that's got to go into the plays you heard from Daryl, Mr. Burrows. I know in the one play you said, let's put the whole field because you've got other bankers to consider. Yes, Clyde. Um, you know, Downing 7. Now, the stable has come well. And, you know, they're always on about that Indigo horse feed or MSM powder or whatever it is. And um, it's obviously turning the horse's form around completely. Um, now, Downing 7 won a good race last time out. Um, he did follow up four days later and win um, after running sixth. Um, you've got horses like the Charioteer that ran in the Racing Association behind Underworld. I thought that was a good effort. You've got Launch Code, the step up in trip. He was a runaway winner, so he could follow up with Mozi Yeni. Um, there are others to consider. I played the, the field route because I am looking for an upset as I've got three bankers on the card. 
Okay, thanks very much, uh, Darren. There's your uh, the jackpot, the Darren Burroughs jackpot that's up there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the field by banker three, by banker two, and the field at the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right, welcome back to this. Um, Studio here for Racing TV, waited to win, Betway is waited to win, and this is a handicap over 1,600 meters. Four fillies and mares at the 70 level, so in a race like this, you would imagine it will be competitive. Having said that, I know Darren Burrows was quite impressed with the official secrets last victory, um, or on the poly anyway, uh, uh, priced up at 19 to 10 at the moment. Second choice, 9 to 2 about number 5, Raising Quinn, and 9 to 2 about number 7, Trip to Barberton. But in certain play, you're going to be bankering this, Darren. Uh, Clyde, I believe she'll win again. You know, her rating's still on a very competitive mark. She was back to <coughs> winning weights over course and distance last time out. She beat that Philly Opera Swing, who's come out to Frank the Form. And uh, just the manner in which she won, she did it very easily. And I think she'll win again. If you go back in her Cape Town form, she took on a lot stronger than this and was competitive. So I'm bankering official secret. Okay. Let's get Daryl's uh, version on this official secret, just how impressive was she when she won? Yeah, she couldn't have been more impressive, Clyde. Um, I think Richard made a winning move around the bend. He was three wide. Got first run on the balance of the field, but um, she did it with a lot of ease. So I don't think the four pound penalty is going to hinder her chances of, okay. yeah, she can certainly follow up. I didn't bank her. I backed up with Demigod. Now, <coughs> excuse me, Clyde. Um, if you ever look at Demigod, she's actually only ever won the tongue tie once, and that was in her last start mm. um, where she got up to win. I don't think she's a seven furlong filly. I think she's better over the mile. So I think um, the two of them are going to be fighting it out. Um, I do have a preference for official secret. But I have healthy respect for Demigod. Yeah, I see Opera Swing, the runner-up to Official Secret, has also come out at one. So that does help in terms of franking form, etc. Um, but uh, yeah, Demigod, you have to respect. Uh, make a note of that as well. So Darren's got a selection worked out for us. So, and we'll put that up for you now. He is quite keen on Official Secret as the horse to beat. But when we're doing the show this morning, yeah, this horse was priced up around 19 to 10. Right, this is the final leg of the first jackpot. Let's have a look at what we've got in store for you here. It is a uh, the Racehorse Owners Association Phillies Guineas Plate, and it's over 1,400 metres this event. There are going to be seven of, seven of them that line up here. And this horse, Idita, everyone's telling me is the right horse. Uh, Chronicles of Narnia came from easy living to win. Idita ran second on that occasion and does appear to be quite hard to beat. Priced up at even money um, this, this, when we're doing the show this morning. Number three, Joy and Peace is the second favorite at 33 to 10. And there's one other in here, number one, Public Benefit, who's priced up also at around seven to two. So those are the top three in the market. But uh, where yeah. are you here with? No, you you love your betting and your form lines. Yeah, eh? yeah, you've got to give the people I did a teach you following. yesterday at Turfentine, those betting and form lines. Club. Mm, sure. Went out, eh? Anyway, yeah. Um, I was surprised to see Adita go so hard in her last start because her pre-race comments were she might need the run. It was her first run after layoff. Um, she just got snared on the line, Clyde. Kind of strip fitter. Concern is second run after rest, but if you have a look at the ratings, she's absolutely slung in. So certainly the one to beat. I backed up with Joy and Peace. Now in her comeback run, you can just put a line through that. Um, she couldn't get a run and then last time out her run was too bad to be true for me mm. they have met in the past there's only a length and a half separating the two of them behind the lunar halo run um yeah clyde two from three okay you two ahead of three um mr burrows from your perspective what are you doing adita adita for me clyde um you know last time out she did go quite hard up front and uh she was coming off off a rest and i thought uh you know she she was just in need of it that last 200 she started feeling the pressure and that horse caught her on the post she'll strip fitter she's got the one gate um in a smallish field she can slow the pace down 
um, according to her own fractions. And I think she'll give that finishing burst in that short run in. So I deter a very confident selection. Um, I think I've suggested a bet as big as 750 um, win bet on Idita. Um, I've only suggested seven bets over 750 and all of them have won in the past. So I'm hoping this one can follow up. Now, joy and peace will rate the danger. Last time out, I don't know what happened because I fancied her very strongly and she just uh, flattened out the final 200 meters. Um, I think she's got a bit of work to match Idita this afternoon. Okay. All right, thanks. There we go, Darren. Yeah, just confirming you have a seven that you've put up a almost a what is it like a seventy-five percent confidence with Ardita. It's quite a, that's his size bet. It's Darren. What he would like to do, you guys can do whatever you please, but Ardita, the one to beat. Daryl does say that joy and peace may well be the only danger.